by now we're really kind of watching the old heroic age of Texas fade. Uh, there's other issues that seem to be crowding out the old days and the old timers. Well, there's really three things I'd like to talk about that really mark the passing of the old Texas and reveal a new Texas waiting just around the corner of the 20th century. You know, that said, I'm not really sure that Texas joined the 20th century until about 1916 to 1920, and I'll explain that in future uh, videos. But in short, Texas is still lagging a little bit behind the rest of the nation. But the three things that really make this point for me are the Alamo, the Rough Riders, and the Texas Rangers. Here's what I mean. Let's talk about the Alamo first. Well, as you know, the Alamo was an old mission that had been turned into a fortress and had been fought over and partially demolished during the course of the Texas Revolution. After the Texas Revolution, the United States Army leased that structure and the grounds from the Catholic Church and used it as a commissary depot. Uh, putting a roof over the unfinished mission and securing that roof with its very distinctive hump that's now on top of the chapel building, part of the facade. All right, in 1883, Texas buys that chapel building, and Hugo and Schmelzer, a wholesale grocer, uh, buys the convent area, what had been the long barracks, during the course of the battle. So that's the state of the Alamo in the late 19th century. In 1889, though, a woman by the name of Adina de Zavala, she's a school teacher and a granddaughter of Texas patriot Lorenzo de Zavala, uh, is living in San Antonio and watches what's going on at the Alamo, and she begins to start, well, she st has conversations with her friends that, you know, we should really begin to mark those heroic days in Texas history, and we should really save the Alamo if we can. And in 1892, the focus of their conversation turns towards the Alamo, and De Zavala approaches the wholesale grocers, Hugo and Schmelter, says, hey, don't ever sell this property except to us. Let us have first crack at it. Hugo and Schmelter says, fine. No problem. Uh, De Zavala and her group of friends uh, really are starting to feel a little isolated because there's other movements afoot to mark Texas history. So in 1893, De Zavala and her circle join in with the Daughters of the Republic of Texas, which is a heritage organization of descendants of that first generation of Texans. The Daughters of the Republic of Texas, essentially Texas's version of the DAR, is formed in 1891. So you can see all this stuff is starting to move around in the early 1890s. Even so, they do not get a hold of the Alamo yet. That happens actually in 1903. A wealthy woman named Clara Driscoll joins the Daughters of the Republic of Texas and brought with her a sizable amount of capacity, financial capacity. Uh, this financial capacity is put on point, and she buys the Hugo and Schmelzer property. Uh, the Hugo and Schmelzer property is then bought from the DRT by the state of Texas. And not only that, they also, the state of Texas has acquired the chapel building. So now you have kind of the footprint that you see today in San Antonio, the chapel and the long barracks. Well, the state owns it, but they don't want to operate it. So they pass it back to the Daughters of the Republic of Texas as stewards. Now, that said, the women begin to feud over how to proceed with the property. In 1909, the Driscoll faction wins, and the De Zavala faction is pretty much edged out of the entire conversation. However, she does come back in one great cause to save the Long Barracks. After all, 
the DRT almost demolished it because it blocked the view of the chapel. Well, this feuding aside, the women of Texas saved the Alamo as a symbol of Texas. And it's a symbol of a Texas that is rapidly fading away. You know, the Alamo hadn't even been remembered right after the battle. It took two years after the battle before anybody even went to recover the, the remains of the dead. Juan Seguin went and scooped them up and put them into an ossuary, uh, or at least a, an urn of some stripe, at the cathedral at San Fernando. So two years goes by before anybody says, hey, oh yeah, <laughs> we should remember the Alamo. It had been used as a hay barn, as a, a commissary depot, but now the Daughters of the Republic of Texas turn it into a shrine of Texas liberty which is really their statement that the heroic past of Texas should be remembered and it should not be swallowed up by time.